Hello students, welcome to Engineers Academy. Let's solve this particular problem from chapter 6, that is the method of joints topic. So now we are required to determine the force in each member of the truss and state if the members are in tension or compression. And it is said that P1 is equal to 20 kN and P2 is equal to 10 kN, right? So we are given this truss. So in chapter 6, we consider that uh, the given truss is in equilibrium, right? So if the given truss is in equilibrium, so then if we consider each joint, then each joint will also be in equilibrium, right? So what we do is that we consider each joint in method of joints, right? So we will solve this 6-1 problem by using the method of joints, right? So we will consider uh, each joint one by one for equilibrium and we will apply the equilibrium condition and that will enable us to determine the forces in each member of this given truss, right? So now if we uh, start with this joint C, since at this joint C we have this P1 force, this external force which is known and we will have two unknown force, right? forces. So one force will be the force of this member BC and one unknown force will be the force of this member CD. Now if we consider this joint C, right? So this BC member, let's say that this BC member applies the force on this joint C in this direction right that is towards the right so let me draw that force of this member bc on this joint c right so we will write that this is f b c and let's say that this ct force applies the force on this joint c in this direction that is in the, in the upward direction right so let's say that this is f c d force right and let's assume that this is our positive x direction and this is our positive y direction, right? So now let me write that we are considering joint C for equilibrium, right? So if we apply the summation of forces along x equals to 0, so as we can see that only this FBC force is acting in the positive x direction and there is no force in the x direction. There is no other force in the x direction. So th this concludes that FBC the force in BC member is equal to zero, right? And similarly, uh, this means that if we apply the summation of forces along Y equals to zero at joint C, right? So then uh, we can see that this FCD is acting in the positive Y direction. So I will write FCD minus P1 and this is equal to zero. So we can say that FCD equals to P1, right? So whatever value of P1 is, FCD will have that much force, right? So FCD force is equal to P1 and P1 for this particular problem is 20 kilonewton, right? So th this FCD is the force of this CD member on this uh, joint C, right? So now if we consider that uh, CD member, let's say that this is that CD member, right? So this uh, CD member applies a force on that joint C in this direction, right? This is that FCD force. So as a reaction, this joint C will apply the force in the opposite direction on this CD member, right? So this will be the direction of the joint force, right? And so this will be that FCD force, but in the opposite direction, right? So now as we can see that this FCD force of the joint is compressing the CD member, right? So from this, we conclude that whenever the the member force is compressing joint C. So as a reaction, the joint will also compress that same member, right? So if this FCD force is towards that joint C, so this means that this is compressing this joint C, right? And as a reaction, the joint C will also compress that CD member, right? So whenever the direction of the force is acting towards the joint, so that will be the compressive force, right? So then we will conclude that this FCD force, which is 20 kilonewton, Right, so this is compressive force, right? So this means that FCD member is under compression. Similarly, if we uh, now consider this uh, joint D, right? So if 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 this joint C, if this member uh, FCD is uh, applying the force on this joint C in this direction, and if this is in compression, if this CD member is in compression, so it will apply the same force on this joint D in the opposite direction, right? So this is that same FCD force at this joint D, right? So now if I consider, if I draw the free body diagram of that joint D, 
right so if this is the fcd force at joint c so the same fcd force will be acting on joint d in the opposite direction right so we will have that same fcd force here in this direction right so we can write that that fcd force is 20 kilo newton right this is that f let me write that this is fcd force which is equal to 20 kilo newton right and similarly uh, we have that PT, uh, P2 force which is acting in this direction right this is that P2, P2 force and here P2 is 10 kilo Newton right and similarly let's assume that the force in this uh, BD member is acting in this direction right so let's say that this is that FBD force let me write that this FBD force which is required right and let's assume that the force uh, applied by this ED member on this joint D is acting in this direction, right? So let's say that this is that F A D force. So now if we consider joint D for equilibrium and if we apply the summation of forces along Y equals to zero, so as we can see that uh, this F B D force will have two components, right? So we need to have this theta. Right? we need to have this theta so we can determine this theta by using these coordinates right so if I apply 10 theta so 10 theta will be equal to this perpendicular which is 1.5 divided by this base which is 2 so theta will be equal to 10 inverse 1.5 divided by 2 so we can find it right so 10 inverse 1.5 divided by 2 so this is equal to 36.87 right so theta is equal to 36.87 right so if we resolve this fbd force into its component so it will have one component which will be acting in this direction this will be the cos component right this will be fbd cos of the theta and it will have one component which will be acting in this direction that is in the positive y direction if this is our positive x and y direction so this one will be the cos component right so this one will be FPD sine of theta. So now if we apply the summation of forces along y equals to 0. So as we can see that this FPD sine component is acting in the positive y direction. So I will write FBD sine of theta. And theta is 36.87. Right. And minus this FCD. Right. So this FCD is 20 kN. So I will write minus 20 kilonewton right and this will be equal to 0 so from this we can say that fbd is equal to 20 divided by sine of 36.87 this is 20 divided by sine of the answer right so answer was that angle right so this is 33.33 kilonewton right so we can write that fbd is 33.33 kilonewton right and as we can see that again this fbd is acting away from this joint d right so this is pulling this joint d so this means that this uh, same fbd force will pull this member right this bd member right so this means that this fbd force is the tension force right Similarly, if we apply the summation of forces along x equals to 0 at joint D, so then as we can see that this P2 force is acting in the positive direction, right? So I will write that this is 10 kN. This FBD cos of theta is acting in the positive direction, so I will write plus. And now FBD is known. FBD is 33.33 cos of theta, which is 36.87. And FAD is acting in the uh, negative direction so I will write minus F A D equals to 0 and if we bring this F A D to the other side of equation so this will be like this its sign will become positive so F A D is equal to 10 plus answer cos of 36.87 so this is equal to 36.67 so F A D is equal to 36.67 kilonewton and again we can see that FAD is compressing this joint D so as a reaction joint D will also compress that AD member right so this means that this is 
compressive force. So now as we can see that uh, we have total four members B, C, C, D, B, D and A, D and we have determined the forces in all the members, right? So this F, B, C member is having zero force, right? F, B, C member is zero. Uh, F, C, D is 20 kilonewton. F, B, D is 33.33 and F, A, D is 36.67 kilonewton, right? So this is the solution of this particular problem.